mo I'm woken up at the crack of dawn by the most irritating clucking noises. Apparently shows alarm is of a rooster crowing. Ah, why? After unceremoniously stifling yawns and getting dressed, I make a quick sweep of the room to make sure I packed all my things. Cho had to make two sweeps because he kept yawning during his first, and forgetting where he had really looked. Yeah, we're still at the hotel, right? We're all silent as we meet in the lobby. Ah Yu and Kari are both wide awake, and as perky as either of them could ever be. But I just realized that Mayu and Valerie they are wearing pink wig. Um oops. Was Valerie wearing pink yes uh, yesterday? I don't think so, right? She was wearing a different jacket. I don't remember her wearing pink yesterday. But okay, I think she changed jacket or something. Or I could be remember things wrong. I mean <laughs> I the last I played this was two days ago, so Yuna and Valerie seem even more exhausted than Cho and I. I wonder what was going on in their room. Let me guess. Pillow fight! <laughs> Before my mind can wander too far, I snap back to reality and glance guiltily at Kauri who has her eyes narrowed. What? Why are you glaring at me? Can she read my thoughts now too? Good thing I wasn't thinking anything perverted. <laughs> Actually I am. Pillow fight! Oh. Oh wait wait. This is a train? <laughs> oh man, this is seriously a train, it's a really high tech train. Although then again, I think I've seen this this background before, like the very first scene of this vision novel. That was a plane though. <laughs> okay, anyway. Still in silence, we make our way to the train station. The train ride home feels even longer than the ride to the hot springs. I mean, so it's very funny that they recycled this background. And this is the one thing I don't like about this vision novel, recycling of backgrounds. So it makes it seem like the airplanes and the <coughs> the trains are the same. <laughs> uh, anyway, I resist the urge to ask, are we there yet? After what feels like an eternity, we arrive at Isokaze. Finally, tapping on the uncomfortable train was nearly impossible and my thoughts kept drifting to my warm bed. I say a quick goodbye to everyone and practically speak home. As soon as I arrive, I make a beeline for my room and collapse onto my bed. That tired. Ah, bright sunlight shines on my face and I slowly blink my eyes open. Then I jot up upright bed. What time is it? Did I miss the coaching session? I fumble around looking for my clock, but it's only 11am. Coach Ivan won't arrive until mid-afternoon. I have plenty of time. In that case, I wonder if anyone is free. Of course, we're going to look for Yuna. No. Ah. No Yuna? I thought we were going down Yuna's road. What is this? <laughs> okay. Then I guess I'll go with Sh Mayu then. I wonder if Mayu is up to anything. So I'm debating whether or not to call her a call comes in from her instead. Hey Mayu. Hi. What's up? Um, I wanted to see if you'd like to go to the bookstore with me again. You wanna buy manga with me again? <laughs> uh, sure. I finished reading the manga I got last time. Me too. Actually, that's why I want to go back. I really liked it, and I want to get the second volume. All right, sure. That's great. Are you ready to go now? Yeah, if that's okay. Of course. Sure, I'll meet you there. After hanging up, I go and get ready. I hop on my bike and drive to the bookstore. Since I'm the first to arrive, I decide to wait for Mayu inside. The same employee from before is at the counter and greets me warmly. Hey, good to see you again. Welcome back. Wow, you remember me? Thanks. Is Mayu not coming today? Oh, he should be here. She is. We're coming separately. Oh. Why, you're, you're attracted to her? <laughs> I'm really surprised he remembers me considering I've only been here one other time. I think that's because you're with her. You're with Mayu. That's why she, he remembers you. <laughs> An employee smiles at me. She has flawless skin and legs that go on for days. Then again, this store is atypical in basically every other way, so maybe I shouldn't be surprised. Don't be looking at girls now. Okay, myself, talking to myself, don't look at girls. 
Not not girls, we don't know, okay? Don't look at girls, we don't know. The doors chime, Mayu survivor. She waves at me. I hope you weren't waiting long. I'm not. Nope, not at all. Let's go find a book. She nods and we head off into the shelves. I browse for anything interesting while Mayu goes straight for the series she wants. After making my selection, Mayu is still browsing the shelves. Did you find what you're looking for? Yeah, but then I also saw this manga which I think is interesting. Or maybe this one? Why not buy them all? <laughs> if you have the money. She trails off Lost in Thought holding an adventure series and a romance series. Which do you think I should get? Ah, adventure or romance? Why not both? Yeah, you know, it's okay to be greedy, why not both? Why don't you get both? I don't want to get too many at once. I like to get more as I finish reading. Oh, okay. I guess I kind of made a mistake. Then I would have chosen romance, you know. Hmm. Well, get whichever interests you more. Hmm. She stares hard in concentration. I'll just be another couple of minutes. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll meet you up front then. No, wait. Let me just rewind this. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Let me just rewind. I don't want. Okay. Yeah, let's not be greedy, alright? Romance! I'm a sucker for good romance. Yeah, I, I do love romance. She blinks. Really? Yeah. But don't tell anyone I say that. She looks thoughtful. I'll just be another couple of minutes. Okay, nothing much. <laughs> okay, I'll meet you up front then. Okay. Okay, that's not change really. Yeah. When I return to the checkout counter, the clerk rings me up. Yeah, I'll just go okay, back to my old I'll choice. Just... Really? Um I wonder if I choose adventure. Maybe let's just take a look at adventure. Adventure stories have a little bit of everything. Can't go wrong with that. She looks thoughtful. I'll just be another couple of minutes. Okay, that's that's nothing much, alright. We just choose Which do you Oops. think? Let's just choose both, yeah. I don't want to get too many at once. Hmm. I'll just be another couple of minutes. Okay, I'll meet you up front then, alright. Okay. When I return to the checkout counter, the clerk brings me up. Did Mayu like the manga she got? I don't, I said I asked her to choose both, but she's still considering. Yep, she liked it so much she let me borrow it so I could read it to Oh, you mean the previous one? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, she definitely enjoyed it. He seems intrigued. Did you like it? Uh, why are you asking me? <laughs> it wasn't bad. <laughs> what did you think of the fanfic? Oh, it's a fanfic? I blinked. What fanfic? He seems surprised. You don't know the fanfic? No. Where can I find it? The first clerk takes the tablet out from behind the desk and pulls up the web page. Here you go. I skim through the chapter note on the top of the page. The main character gives up her musical career and returns to her hometown to take care of her mother. She struggles to adapt to her new life but is reunited with her child friend. This sounds familiar. I thought I've read this before. <laughs> So, for, uh, so far, this is staying true to the manga. This chapter begins when she and her child friend are reconnecting, and she's beginning to develop feelings for him. Oh! He grins at me and the heat flows in my face. I quickly look away. What is going on? I've seen that some smile a million times. Wait, I've seen that same smile a million times before. Doesn't mean anything. Except that it means everything. <laughs> what does that mean? Knowing that his attention is on me, no one else, makes my heart beat faster. There is an electricity swirling in currents around us, making the air tick. Do you think we should invite the others? He asks, and my heart sinks. Why am I disappointed? After all, we are only friends. Yeah, I mean, you would have said, oh, let's go together, you know. But maybe he's shy, but then, you know, a man shouldn't say that. I shake my head to clear my thoughts and he frowns in worry. You don't have to invite them if you don't want to. I don't want to. I want to smile and tell him it would be nice to spend time with just the two of us. No, oh, we should. I think you and all enjoy it too. Why did I say that? It flashes me another warm smile and my knees go weak. Oh, of course. 
That's why. Hey guys. Hey. I glance up as Mayu puts her books down. What are you reading? Uh, just a fanfic. I didn't know you like fan fiction. Is it good? Oh, I used to read fan fiction, you know. It can be fun, you know, when you least expected it. Um, I'm really getting the feels. Lols! I mean, different. Come on out. I, I, I'm not so bad as to say lols. <laughs> and I'm not indifferent. I'm really getting the feels. Yes. <laughs> like, I'm so angry with the boy though. <laughs> That's the feels I'm getting. Yeah, I've only read a little bit, but I'm really starting to get invested in the characters and want to learn more. I'll probably finish it reading it later. Really? Yeah. Yeah, let me read you a section. It grins at me and the heat flows in my face. I quickly look away. What is going on? I've seen that same smile a million times before. It doesn't mean anything. Except that it means everything. Blah blah blah, I think yeah, we're not gonna read through this again. <laughs> yeah, you're blushing, right? Uh, Mayu's face drains of color and turns bright red. I pause. Because this is like, you know, um, this is like describing she and me. I'm not really going down your route, you know, Mayu. <laughs> but okay. Have you read this before? The store clerk begins laughing as Mayu's blush deepens. I look from one to the other. Uh, this is strange. What's going on? Um, well, actually... Um, actually? She looks away, seemingly too embarrassed to finish. She wrote it. Oh! Mayu wrote it? <laughs> what? Yeah, Mayu shared it with me, which is why I was surprised you hadn't read it yet. She didn't share with it with me, that's the thing. Her eyes widen. Wow, Mayu, that's awesome! Yeah, yeah, you're super talented. Have you written anything else? She she uh, she seems shy. The only other ones I've written, I haven't posted. Then post it to me. <laughs> you should post it. Yeah, they're just as good. I agree. You've got a gift. <laughs> you're just trying to make her happy, right? Attractive male one. <laughs> M maybe. We continue to chat about my use writing. The clerk gives her a discount on her purchases, which Mayu is thrilled about. After promising to return soon, I offer Mayu a ride back to campus. Thank you for coming with me today. No problem, anytime. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I'd want to uh, make you not jealous though. No problem. I'll be looking out for your next chapter. She blushes. Uh, please don't tell the others though. I'm not sure they'd understand. Well, okay, if you say so. Not even sure? She flashes. Actually, he already knows. Oh, sure, already knows, okay. Really? I'm not sure why I'm so surprised. Makes sense that she would let she would tell him. She nods. He normally doesn't read that kind of stuff, but he read everything that I wrote and he said he loved it. Oh, cool. I'm glad Sho is finally being more receptive to Mayu's interests and hobbies. He just may have found a new interest too. Yeah, I think the two of you should just get together, really. Well, I promise I won't say anything. Thanks. She smiles and waves goodbye. Who knew Mayu was so creative? Not only does she play on play an instrument, but she also writes. I wonder if she can draw too. Yeah, the instrument is from that that music band, right? Actually, whatever happened to the music band? <laughs> Mounting over the thought, I head out. Right. It's about time for our session with Coach Ivan. I double check my email and make my way to the pre combat room. That's where we are supposed to meet him. Oh, hate okay, this place. As I walk in, I see the rest of my team crowded around the holo table. I can't believe he sent all this. This is incredible! Wait, I thought he's going to be here. <laughs> is he going to be here? Yuna Greens. Yup, this consultation isn't just for the pilots. It's for everyone on the team. Ah. Valerie scrolls through the projected hologram, pausing at an image of a gear loaded with statistics. 
In this approach, I can make out what looks like the game plans of previous professional matches, complete with sketches, tactics, movements, and cores. This sort of edited information is incredibly relevant for all parties on the field or on the team. Cho is the first to notice me. Brosif. Huh? Once he sounds my arrival, the rest of my team green or wave at me. Hey guys. Cho puts an arm around my shoulder. Are you ready to meet Ivan? Of course. You know it. There's nothing left to do but wait for Ivan to arrive. Yeah, he's coming. Valerie and Mayu continue to scroll through the holo table while the rest of us take seats on the couches lining the walls. What do you guys think Coach Ivan is like? A big guy? <laughs> that that's the my first impression. Like maybe like um yeah, a big guy, you know. Is Kari nervous? She keeps a cool facade, but her gaze constantly darts towards the door. I heard he's the shot caller on his team. He's the one leading the tactics and pulling in the high numbers. Oh, is it? Then we've got a good coach. Mm-hmm. He's even received the MVP award twice already. Wow. I remember they, they had mentioned that yesterday as well. I racked my brain trying to understand why I hadn't heard of him before. The only player I remember who won two MVP awards on the national stage is Chong Am Gear. Right. That's his Elias for the global stage. Oh, so that's him. Hmm. I always thought it was a little strange that he never even took off his helmet for interviews. Maybe he just wants to, you know, keep his identity private. He doesn't need to. He doesn't even speak in interviews. Does he even speak? <laughs> and he's willing to meet us? Harry nods. What? That's his persona, and it's worked really well for him. Persona, okay. Hearing all of this just makes me even more curious about what kind of person Coach Ivan is. Wait, how is he going to coach us? Does he even know how to talk? Maybe through robot language, I don't know. <laughs> don't be stupid, Show. <laughs> of course he can talk. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Curry, please. I think. What do you mean you think? <laughs> Actually, I've heard rumors that his face was half burnt during a racing motorcycle accident. That's why he always wears a helmet. Wait, seriously? Half burnt? Oh, okay. If that's the case, then. Uh, I think I remember reading that too. So, so it's not because. Then, okay, maybe he's wearing a helmet because he wanted to. You know, hide his face, you know, his burnt face, so okay, that makes sense. Ouch! I cringe just remembering the rare couple of times I fell off my bike. I don't even want to imagine how painful it would be to fall off my bike while racing. What, what if he's scary? I don't think he's scary. I've heard he yells at first year pilots, who are worse. Come on, Valerie, don't do this. I use eyes widen. Believe, you believe the thing Valerie says he, even even Yuna doesn't buy it. <laughs> Valerie pets Mayu sympathetically on the back. It was nice knowing you. <laughs> what? Oh, but, but why? Her eyes fell out with tears. Stop being mean, Valerie. Yeah, Kari also knows. Don't listen to Valerie. She's just teasing. Valerie sweats. Or am I? <laughs> Alright, is he here? The door slides open, catching all of our attention. A muscular man, well over 6 feet tall, commands the room. He's wearing a leather jacket with black pants. A polished helmet hides his face. Yeah, I knew he's gonna be a pretty big guy, tall guy. He crosses the room with thunderous steps and pauses before us, as large and silent as a mountain. Oh, he's the typical mysterious black biker. Yeah, the mysterious black biker over here. And he's really tall, you know. The group dances nervously at each other. Nobody wants to break the silence. Uh, hello, can you talk? His helmet slowly turns towards me, and I fidget between, beneath his gaze. I can't see his eyes, which makes this all the more disconcerting. 
After a moment, his helmet surveys the rest of the team. How are you mean stoic while Mayu tries to make herself small? Both Yuna and Valerie look uncertain while Sho seems confused about how he should feel. Coach Ivan nods. He puts his hands on either side of his helmet. Wait, you're going to take off your helmet? He's going to reveal his true face to us. Sho catches my eyes in anticipation. Are we actually going to see what's underneath the helmet? Oh. <laughs> wow, wow. Okay, okay. So you remove your helmet and you like unzip your jacket. Okay, trying to act cool. <laughs> Actually, I did have in my mind, I was kind of like thinking that he had he would look something like this with a mustache and all that, but I didn't think he would actually look like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you do, because you know the name Ivan, kind of reminds you of like a magician named Ivan or something like that. A, a magician with a moustache, I don't know. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, but, okay. Coach Ivan pulls it off in one sweeping motion, <coughs> revealing a shiny bald head and the most beautiful moustache I've ever seen. Underneath his moustache is a beaming smile. Hey, glorious day it is! Ivan, adopt me. <laughs> <coughs> what? His jacket has somehow unzipped itself. It reveals a perfectly sculpted head pad. Puts my meager six pack to shape. Under the wings of experience, I shall teach you to soar the sky. Why do you sound like that? That other guy who also speak like this. <laughs> You know that that guy, that Japanese guy. I, I I can't remember his name. Tatsuki or something like that. Yeah, to infinity and beyond. Something like that. <laughs> his face falls. Uh, she looks like her nightmare has come to life. The rest of the girls are mirrors of confusion. Cho, on the other hand, as, uh, looks as if his dreams have come true. Really? Do you know someone named Tatsuo by any chance? Yeah, that, that's the guy I'm talking about, Tatsuo. <laughs> Ivan looks at Sho. Even if he smiles, his piercing gaze is unsettling. And Sho scoots back. You speak of my nephew? Wait, that's your nephew? That explains a lot. But why is your name like so different from your nephew Tatsuo? <laughs> Yuna stands up. Hi, Mr. Podubni. Thank you for agreeing to coach our team this afternoon. Podubni. Utter not my family name. All formalities between friends must not exist. <laughs> okay, sure. So we're friends, okay. Oh, um, okay. Ivan, <coughs> thank you. You not. Of course. We will begin with lesson one. Okay, what's lesson one? To sprout into a magnificent tree, we must first water the roots. Very deep. <laughs> Very very deep, okay. The foundations? Yes, basically the basics. Yes, fiery flower, the roots. Oh, you call her fiery flower flower. What? <laughs> Ivan motions us to the holograph. We cautiously approach and Ivan projects an image of a seed. First, the seed requires sunlight, water, carbon dioxide, and rich soil. Okay. <laughs> I know that, but um the key to remember is the symbiotic relationship between plant and environment. So what does that have to do with us? <laughs> Through light energy absorbed by chlorophyll, conversion occurs of carbon dioxide and water to create glucose and oxygen. Ivan, we're not learning science here, okay? <laughs> we want to learn about robots, not science. Or strategies, tactics, not science. Have I fallen asleep and started dreaming I'm in class again? Jeez, this is like listening to Valerie explain. Engineering? At least this isn't so bad, the chlorophyll stuff. But if you're talking about Valerie, hers is more technical. Wham! Did you say something? <laughs> Show up his fresh bruise. Of course not, nothing at all. This is the first time I've seen Valerie get angry though. I'm good. Valerie turns back to the holograph. Cho looks at me. I think she's been hanging around Cal recently, <laughs> No, it's you you kind of piss her off. <laughs> but yeah, that was the first time Valerie showed anger. 
Wham. Did you say something? <laughs> no. No. You dare <laughs> question the wondrous feat of photosynthesis? <laughs> show you so in deep trouble. Heaven stalks up the show and stares him down. His mustache droops in disappointment. No. Uh, I mean, yes. Yes, that it's wondrous. Please don't hurt me. Oh my god, what is this? Evan stares suspiciously at Show before resuming his lecture. We try to follow the best we can as he continues to talk. After finishing his lecture on planet science, he looks at all of us. So, okay, tell us, what does this have to do with our, our tactics? Understood? Yes. <laughs> He's very silent. Evan uses his fingers to elongate his mustache in great thought. Demonstration will triumph explanation. Yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Evan not solemnly. Make haste to the simulations. All right, here we go now. Now we're talking. <laughs> as soon as we enter the simulation, Ivan sets up to spar with AI gears. Once the match is over, he points out that we lost focus or how we could have prevented getting hit. Then gives us suggestions on how to tighten up as a unit. Once he shared his insight with, he sends us back in for another round. While we fight the AIs, Ivan and Valerie talk quietly about simple fixes to our gears. He seems pleased by what Valerie shares with him. I assume she mentioned the original tweaks she added to our gears when she first joined the team. Also, I guess Ivan does know some engineering stuff. The more Valerie talks, the more animated Ivan becomes. You know, watches everyone closely and jots down notes in her tablet. I have a feeling she's recording feedback on our session with Coach Ivan as well as recording feedback from our simulator matches. Based on just the brief notes Ivan provided on our first match, our second match felt worse apart from the first. It's quite apparent why he won two MVP awards. He truly lives up to his title of strong arm gear. Okay. So long as you can decipher why he says Photosynthesis! The water cycle! <laughs> Whatever, man. We exit the simulator feeling satisfied and more confident than before. Ivan greets us by the holo table. And so the dial of time lands for my departure. Alright, to infinity and beyond! <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Pu. <laughs> Yes, I see gaze falls on show. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, thanks, Ivan. Ivan smiles. Wow, that's smile. That's one. That's a pretty awesome smile. <laughs> we appreciate your time. And all this data analysis will help me fine tune the gears to give him that extra boost. We can't lose after a training session like that. Yeah, but we can see that Coach Ivan is good. Ivan begins to sniff away. You're gonna cry? Is something wrong? <laughs> You're so touched. He rubs his eyes with his forearm. You guys. Okay. Suddenly, Ivan scoops all of us into group hug. Make me so proud. <laughs> Where is this guy even? He squeezes us so tightly, I guess, for air. Joe mops. Help me! We're trying to wriggle free. Oh, he looks terrified as she squished into Yuna's chest. I frowned but quickly keep myself in check. I wish Mayu and I could switch places, but was I really about to get jealous of Mayu? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Yuna's my girlfriend, you know. Valerie tries to hug Ivan's arm while Kari looks like a deer in headlights and struggles to break free. <laughs> Ivan doesn't notice. Hey! <laughs> After one last squeeze, he releases us and that's our deep sigh. And so the nest perch on the branch finds its awakening. Go forth, hatchlings! Um, you're not gonna teach us anymore? <laughs> oh, back to his helmet. His helmet magically materializes in his hand. He puts it on and zips up his jacket, then offers us a final thumbs up. <laughs> okay. We wave goodbye as he heads out, calling out our tanks to his retreating form. Man, I am so pumped for our match tomorrow. Me too. Should we get some practice in while we can? Yeah. 
Probably shakes the head, no? I think Valerie needs to make the recommended calibrations <coughs> first. Oh, okay. Yep. They aren't major control changes or anything, so you won't feel a difference while piloting. You'll just get better energy efficiency based on piloting patterns Ivan pointed out. Okay. Probably not. That's exactly what we need. Huh, okay. So, what do we do until then? It is reading week. So, study? No. I don't say it. No. Study. No! Study. 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 Can we cover so yes? Idiot! What's wrong with you? Anything but that. Study. Study. <laughs> so. Come on, study. Are you into lost her arm with OP shows? Oh, she's making a move. It won't be that bad. I promise. Cho glances at Mayu's smile, and then his own face lights up. Uh, okay. I mean, I think they're. I mean, they've been a couple for some time. It, it's hinted, but I think they're officially a couple now, right? We'll talk to you guys later. All right, you go. You two lovebirds, go do your thing. <laughs> Mayu smiles, and the two of them are off. You're all good then, Valerie. Yep, I'll send a text when I'm done. All right. Okay. Thank you. I'd better get to studying too. Okay, see you, Kari and Valerie. And now we we're gonna go on a date with Yuna. <laughs> Study with Yuna. That is. I walk. I nod and watch her head off. Well, since I'm already on campus, I'll go submit my report on the coaching session. Hey, I'll I'll go with you. I'm a little disappointed that we can't hang out. She notices my expression. If I finish early, I'll let you know. Okay, please. All right. I'll see you later. Oh, lovey! Mwah. I'll see you later. I wave goodbye. Do you want some company? No, it's okay. I'll be doing some boring stuff anyway, and I'm not a fan of over-the-shoulder spectators. Oh, you you don't like being distracted? Me too. I don't like people looking at me when I'm doing work. Yeah, I like to focus on my own. That's my style. I not. All right, let me know if you need anything. Sure. <coughs> With some time on my hands, I head to the library to actually squeeze in a study session. The library is packed, which I guess makes sense since exams are right around the corner. After circling the desk a couple of times, I managed to sneak into a desk store just as another student is sleeping. I feel like a car trying to find a parking space in a crowded lot. A few hours go by in the blur. Valerie texts at one point saying the changes are done, but otherwise nothing eventful happens. Where are you, Yuna? <laughs> That's all the studying I can do in one sitting. I pack up my tablet and wonder if anyone's available. Yuna! Yes! Yuna! I'm coming for you! Now pops into my mind and decide to give her a call. I wonder how she's spending her reading week. She answers the phone almost immediately. Um, hello? You know it's me. <laughs> hey, Yuna. Oh, I was <coughs> in the middle of calling you when you called me. Oh, that's great. I, I caught you first. So I'm a good guy, right? I'm a good boyfriend. Does that mean you were thinking about me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, good. I'm a little surprised by how frank she is. I thought she would be like, oh shy, oh no, no. Maybe like Kaori or maybe Mayu. Well, obviously I was thinking about you two. Would you like to come over? Of course! Sure, I'll be right there. Great, I'll see you soon. <coughs> when we hang up, I head to my bike and drive to Yuna's house. Wait, we're going to Yuna's house? <laughs> oh! Oh, right here. Actually, going to her house. The parking I knock, sounding on her door. There's a shuffling on the other side, and it takes her a while before she opens the door. Crack. Oh. No. What? What? No. What? <coughs> <coughs> she slams the door shut again. What? What are you doing? <laughs> hey. Uh, that was strange. Is it because she hasn't like, you know, clean up her room first? Uh. <laughs> Something like that. There are more noises on the other side of the door before Yuna flings it open. Hi. Um, okay, you said first you said no, now, now then you said no before you said hi. What's going on? <laughs> um, okay, 
anyway, she's dressed in a new casual outfit. I think, yeah, this looks good on a normal, normal outfit. Uh, hey. Woof! Oh. Oh! I didn't know she has a pet. She has a puppy. <laughs> she's raising a puppy on her own. Oh, this is so cute. And the dog's pretty cute too, the puppy. Brown puppy. The big nose. And the ears are, you know, flat down. Yeah. I stared the wriggling ball of fur trying to jump free from her arms. Oh, so when she said no, she was talking to the dog. <laughs> she was talking to the puppy. Puppy! Yay! Ugh, slobber factory. What the hell? Who? You, you, you're really, really. You're a prick if you actually say this second one. You have a dog? And this is a puppy. I open my arms and Yuna lets the pup hop into them. It still slaps my body with each whack as the puppy tries to plant kisses all over my face. <laughs> Aww. <coughs> you did tell me you got a dog! I'm just borrowing him for now. Borrowing him? Borrowing? Wow, look at Yuna's house. Now this is what you call a unique background. Yeah, this is Yuna's house, although... Why does this look kind of familiar? <laughs> yeah, was did we see this background before? Only the difference is that background that we saw before was night time. This is evening time. Yeah, but okay, let's just say this is Yuna's house. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. I like the the you know the evenings evening setting, the sunlight and all. Yeah, Yuna moves aside so I can enter and closes the door behind me. Then she puts the puppy down. It scampers to my leg and paws at my feet as I carefully make my way to the couch. Yuna sits down beside me. Okay, not really borrowing. I've been volunteering at the local animal shelter oh. since I moved to Isokaze. And when I found out they needed foster homes for some of their pets, I volunteered to take Mochi home with me. You, you call your dog Mochi, okay? As you can tell, he loves people. And he's already been housebroken, so they don't think it'll be long before he gets adopted. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Mochi tries fruitlessly to hop onto the couch and misses each time. After attempting a few more times, he sits back on his haunches and whines. Actually, I'm not sure why he's housebroken. Yeah, but okay. Yuna giggles, then scoops him back up in her arms. He settles into her lap. How long have you had him? Ah. Actually, I wanted to ask you about that. Uh, ask me whether I can face the puppy? Um, I don't mind as long as I'm doing it with you. Huh? I'll have to give him back next week, but I don't really want to. You want to keep it? You want to adopt him? She nods and fondly pets Mochi's head. The house doesn't feel so big and empty when he's around. Oh yeah. Wait, um, I mean she has, her parents are still around right? Or is it that her parents are staying elsewhere, not here? I, oh, oh yeah, 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 okay, uh, now I remember, yes. Her parents had a separate house, right? Her parents don't usually live at that separate house, but sometimes they do come here to stay with Yuna, right? But most of the time they stay in another house, yeah. I glance around the living room. The space is conservative, uh, conservatively decorated, but includes a lot of photographs of the family. Antique buses and cabinets tastefully fill the space. I wonder if these are family heirlooms or items passed down from generation to generation. Looking at, looking at all the smiling faces of Yuna, Yudai and their parents, I can understand why Yuna feels alone in such a big house. She's constantly reminded of the past. Yeah. Especially her living alone in this house when her parents don't always live here. What did your parents say? You know, bites her lip. You haven't told them. I haven't told them yet. Okay. Not even about fostering the puppy? No. I'm not sure what they'll say. We used to have dogs back when we still lived in the countryside, so it's not like I don't know how to take care of them. Okay. But maybe this is not the countryside? They won't even notice. Huh. Yeah, they had a they have a house in the countryside, right? That's where they're staying mainly. 
Yeah, that's where they're staying at mainly. Kochi's plush bed is in the corner where the kitchen and living room connect. Compared to the rest of the decor, his colorful and modern toys stick out like a sore thumb. Who says sore thumb? It's not that bad. I think they might. He frowns and furrows her, bro her brow. Kochi seems to sense her anxiety and places his front paws on her chest to lick her face again. Oh! Now she's licking her face. <laughs> It's so cute, this dog. I really want it. Mochi. She turns her face away but laughs. Just ask your parents all he loves you. Keep him. Have you thought about the responsibilities? Don't be so, so, I wouldn't choose this because I don't want to sound like a parent. <laughs> and I just ask your parents. And just just keep him. Look how happy he is. I think he likes you. I think so too. You should keep him. Your parents will understand. You two are meant for each other. <laughs> she giggles. But oh no. But, but, we must add this. You and I are meant for each other more. <laughs> or something like that. You might have some competition for my affection now. Oh no, I'm definitely gonna win over. win over Mochi, okay? Don't worry. <laughs> Never mind, he needs to go. She laughs again. It sounds like you have already made up your mind. Maybe. She pauses. Maybe. It's not that I'm worried my parents will say no. I don't think they'd be opposed to the idea. I just... I ju you just? Like, you won't be able to take care of him or some... Of the... Of mo Mochi or something, seeing that you're alone? Don't worry, I'll, I'll be here, you know? I don't want them to think they're bad parents. What? You don't want them to think they're bad parents? I understand why they don't stay here for too long, and I don't want them to oh. become lonely. Oh, okay, okay. So by you're saying that by adopting a dog, you make them think that you're lonely? Okay. Are you lonely? Then how about I stay with you? <laughs> yeah. It can be a little quiet. Well, whenever it starts feeling too quiet, you can always give me a call. I'll come and keep you company. And she blushes. Thanks. Yeah, anytime, girl. Just don't, uh, you know, you're, I'm your boyfriend, so, you know, just call me. We pause. Do you ever miss the countryside? She blinks in surprise. A little. I love Isokaze, but sometimes I wish we were a little closer to nature. Yeah, I mean, this is the academy, so you know, it's a modern facility, so. But yeah, it'd be cool if there's forest nearby. What about you? Yeah, I can appreciate, you know, nature. Me too. I like indoor nature. Um, <laughs> indoor nature. Uh, me too, yeah. I know what you mean. I do I do like outdoor nature more than indoor. I know what you mean. Whenever I need to clear my head, I like to sit in the green of the trees and think. Yuna smiles. Me too. Something about being away from the noise of everyday life is really soothing. Yeah. You especially feel that way when you get older. Trust me. <laughs> Why don't we do something to get away this weekend? Like what? Like, go out to... To see the nature. We could go camping. Oh, just the two of us? But what about exams? Oh yeah, after exams. We've already been studying hard for them all week. The week would be nice. Especially since you don't want to get burnt out. You know, looks thoughtful and a smile gradually graces her lips. It doesn't sound so bad. Plus, I haven't gone in a while. Let's go then. It's about time, isn't it? Okay. Alright, we've got a date! Camping date! Alright! Mochi yips and hops off of Yuna's step. Are we going to bring Mochi along? I think so. He races to his bed of toys sliding on the hardwood floors. <laughs> I think he wants to play. Alright, let's entertain her. Mochi. Play fetch, play tuck of war, forget toys, give belly rubs. I'll pass. Um, play. I think I'm more tempted to go with this one. This one is kind of cruel though. I mean, like, they talk of wars. 
I can kind of imagine how this will work is basically maybe you give the dog a frisbee right and just as the dog is uh, chews on the frisbee you pull it back uh, then you will have a tug of war between the dog and, her, <laughs> and yourself uh, no I'm not going to play this fetch uh, fetch is good if you're playing outside but I think I'll give give it belly rubs are you sure he wants to play or does he want belly rubs catch up to the little puppy and scratch behind his ears. His tongue lolls out and he flops to the side exposing his belly. I rub his belly and he leans back in enjoyment, you see? When I pause he sits back up and nudges my hand. You know gigas. What a little attention seeker. <laughs> yeah. Oops, now that he's all wound up, I should probably take him for a walk so he doesn't accidentally wet himself. Okay, this sounds a bit wrong but okay, yeah. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be good. Do you want to join? Oh, sure. I glance out the window at the darkened sky. I should probably get back before it gets too late. Come on now, don't be a spoil spot. You know not. Thanks for coming over. Well, no problem. Yeah, no problem. Bye, Mochi! Mina picks up one of Mochi's paws and waves it around. <laughs> bye bye! Bye bye! Woof woof! We both laugh as Mochi looks down at his paw in confusion. <laughs> Ida grabs the leash and secures it around Mochi's neck, and we leave the house together. She heads towards the park while I head back to my park and fire for Okay. After parking my bike, I let myself into the house. The living room is empty. I hear some crackling noise in the background. It's the vision of a... Is it cooking? Where's everybody? I hear voices in the kitchen and hurry over. Yeah. Oh, all of them are gathered at the kitchen. Uncle Kaito doesn't look happy. I pause as soon as I push open the doors. Yuki is bent over the la table laughing. Laughing? Aunt Yuki stands by the fridge laughing as hard as Nikki while Uncle Kaito chucks water looking increasingly confused. Okay. Oh hi Aunt Yuki, I didn't know you were here. Aunt Yuki tries to compose herself when she sees me and rushes over to give me a hug. Oh good, you're home. You're waiting for me? Oops, I got some flour on you. What? Ah, that's okay. Baking something? Uncle Kaito's eyes are watering as he lunges towards the fridge and pulls out a carton of milk. Ah, you okay Uncle Kaito? Too much flour? <laughs> he doesn't answer as he chucks a fresh glass of milk. Nikki finally composes herself enough to answer. Aunt Yuki's making his Chinese food tonight. Oh. Ran one of the chilies around the rim of Uncle Kaito's glass when he wasn't looking. What? What? <laughs> oh, that explains why he's closing his eyes. <laughs> Play a trick on him. Okay. She starts laughing again. Doesn't hit you at first. Once it does. Yeah. I, I know the feeling, I mean, especially if you rub, if you accidentally rub, you know, chili on your eyes. Wow, can you imagine the feeling? Uncle Kaito takes another sweet of milk for Aunt Yuki Gigas. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. Their laughter is infectious and I find myself laughing with them. It's good to see Aunt Yuki hasn't lost a sense of humor. Uncle Kaito. Hasn't Anyuki played this same prank on you before? She has! <laughs> That's what makes it so funny! All for the same trick. <laughs> it's been a while, cut me some slack! You're losing your touch. Anyuki's been away for too long. True. Nikki sighs. Do you really have to leave again, <coughs> Anyuki? It's so fun when you're around. Wait, you're leaving again, Anyuki? On a business trip, another business trip, I think. Hey, are you saying I'm not fun? You're always working so late at night. <laughs> no, you're fun too. When you're free. That sounded awfully like a pity compliment. Nikki Gigas. And Yuki fidgets with the corner of her apron. Actually, you'll all be seeing a lot more of me. Oh, oh is that so? That's nice to know. Uncle looks at her in surprise. Really? She meets his gaze and nods. 
if that's all right with you. Come on, Taito, say yes. Of course, I, I just... Does that mean you're really going to stay here? Yeah, unless there's a reason why I shouldn't. Come on, Uncle Kaito, don't disappoint you, uh, Yuki. No, but... Uh, Kaito hesitates. Yuki watches with bated breath. Her eyes are white with excitement and I can tell it's taking a lot of self-control for her to keep quiet. I'm unsure if I should even be witnessing this conversation. You should. I should. An Yuki seems to understand Uncle Kaito's unspoken question. Watching you with the kids, you've uh, changed. Changed? Now, I guess he's less busy with work and stuff, caring more about kids. Yuki, I... I... KISS! <laughs> Yuki can't hold it in anymore and explodes. Aunt Yuki belongs here, Uncle Kaito. Let her stay. <laughs> Both Yuki and Kaito flash deeply. Yuki? What? They clearly need my help. Let's give them some privacy. I begin to push out of the room. But... Privacy? No buts. Reluctantly, Nikki allows me to lead her out of the kitchen and into the living room. We both sit on the couch and I turn on the TV. Do you think Aunt Yuki will really stay? I'm sure she will. Of course. You know, of course. No doubt about it. Yeah, she obviously still cares for Uncle Kaito and he still cares for her. I have a feeling that once she comes back, she won't be going anywhere. I hope so. Then we'll be a family again. I glance at Nikki. She looks hopeful yet apprehensive. Again? We've always been a family. I know, but it wasn't the same without Aunt Yuki around. It felt incomplete somehow, like Uncle Kaito was missing a part of himself. True. It'd definitely be more interesting having her back. We wait in silence. Every so often, Nikki will sneak glances at the door, but she doesn't move. I can't ignore the delicious smell of Kung Pu chicken walking out of the kitchen and my stomach grumbles loudly. We are, we are cooking Chinese food, right? Yeah. <laughs> I kind of wish they were having this conversation after we had already taken our patience. Gigas. Are you ever not hungry? You're hungry too. <laughs> her eyes widen as her stomach grumbles just as loudly. Now it's my turn to laugh. <laughs> oh, luckily we don't have to wait much longer before Anyuki pops her head out. Are you kids hungry yet? Of course. Starving. Then I guess we better feed you. Dinner's ready. So you're staying? I jump to my feet and race into the kitchen, but Nikki lingers beside Anyuki. Does this mean you're staying? Of course I'm staying. There's no way I'm going to let Kato keep you kids to himself. <laughs> yes. Nikki grins from year to year and hugs Yuki tidy. I'm so happy! There will finally be another woman in the house! <laughs> finally be another woman? So you feel so... So... Uh, like the odd one out? And Yuki laughs as the two of them join us at the table. I don't know how you managed all by yourself. Me neither. Everyone saw smiles as we sit down to eat. After dinner, D Nikki dragged Aunt Yuki upstairs to show her the new dress she bought last week. Uncle Kaito and I are watching TV. In the middle of our show, his phone dings with an email. As he opens the email, his jaw says, Oh, oh. Is, are there any new results regarding that the investigation of our parents' deaths? Accident? What is it? It's an email from the PI. Uh oh. What does he say? He holds the phone out for me to see and we reveal the email together. Again, the content does not share much, but stresses that the accident might have been more than just an accident. The other dr driver had been spotted talking to Dad right before the car crash. Oh. <laughs> Some conspiracy going on here. Wait, someone wanted to hurt that on purpose? How is voice he screamed. That seems to be what the PI is implying. 
Why would he want to hurt them? Some quarrel, I guess, with dad. I wish I knew. Wasn't the other driver someone your dad knew? Yeah. Uh, Aja Wilson was dad's colleague. They worked closely on projects together. Ezra Wilson. That sounds like a female's name. Did something happen between them? Not that I know of. And we can't even ask him since he's still in the coma last I heard. Wait. Oh, wait. He's still in the coma? What? Kaito nods. Well, the PI is still investigating. I'm sure he'll have more information soon. When you say he's in a coma, I said back then. Because now I think they're both dead, right? None of this is making any sense. Ezra and Dad worked on the same projects together, or as long as I can, re can remember. And he always seemed like a nice guy. I can't imagine that he want to hurt Dad. Who is this Ezra though? Like some random name popped out all of a sudden. Does this mean Dad knew this was coming too? But how could he? He only left because Nikki caught him. And, but, and what about Mom? I let out a frustrated sigh. I wish you could just tell me what happened. Wait a minute. That's research. So dad is actually not dead by using a coma. Mom is dead though. The strange encryption in my car. Oh. Oh right. Yes. Remember what Valerie said about some hidden script in the, the call? Yeah, that hidden message. That probably is a message from him. Right? Uncle Kaito notices the change in my expression. What is I wonder if this has something to do with my call. Because of the weird thing it did during your first match? Well, that's part of it, but there's something else. Maybe. If whoever wanted your dad dead was after your core, then you might be in danger. You probably shouldn't use Eagle again just to be safe. Uh, but I have to. I wouldn't go that far. All my call did was use extra energy packs. At least that's what my professor said. That's why the referees didn't disqualify me from the match. Hmm. Extra energy doesn't sound like something to kill over. It's probably the uh, hidden message there. That's the... Yeah. That's the thing. My thoughts exactly. I brought up my call for a different reason. It might be nothing, but our team engineer found a weird encryption from that in my call. She didn't think it was anything important, but now I'm not sure. What does it say? I haven't decrypted it yet. <laughs> I don't know. He nods. I try to refocus on the TV show, but I can't stop thinking about the accident on purpose. <laughs> I think I'm just going to go to bed. Alright, try not to stress too much about this. I promise we'll find out what happened. Well, I'm gonna, we're gonna get to the bottom of this. I'm gonna find out what that script, you know, that hidden script said yeah, in, in the call that let that left us behind. Uh, that left behind to us, I mean. I smile weakly. Thanks, Uncle Kaito. After saying goodnight, I get ready for bed, then sleep under the blankets. I close my eyes, trying to clear my mind, but end up running through every detail of the accident I remember, hoping to find a clue. Eventually, I fall asleep out of pure exhaustion.